everyone meet the fabulous Sandra Bernhardt. Hey, Sandra, how did we meet? Tell the folks we how we met. met. Because you had mentioned me on some chat show that people you'd like to design for. That's and right. my manager heard it, my manager at the time, Terry Danzer, and reached out to you and set up an actual meeting, not a virtual meeting. <laughs> exactly. And I came into your atelier. That's and right. That, and you made something gorgeous for me and made gorgeous things for me year after year after year after year that I wore on David Letterman. Yes, that I wore you to my did. Premieres, to events. And By the way, you know what I like? I like on top of all of that, which we'll get to, I like a bit of history, right? Like Sandra Bernard, not a lot of people know this, but you are not from a major city. I mean, you're from like um, Michigan, right? Like originally well, born in Flint, Michigan. Michigan until I was 10. And then right. we moved out to Arizona to Scottsdale. So as a young girl in Michigan and then later Arizona, who was not like every other little girl, not every, person is as brilliant not the or girl next door. not the girl next door so how did that go down like what was that like for you can you tell us a little about that well I think it was more it had more impact when we moved to Arizona because it was like just sort of like the Cheryl Teague's blonde you know waspy right. kind of girls and so for me it was like yeah I mean I wasn't totally like happy about it because I felt you know I didn't feel embraced but I found my groove and I found like-minded people, you know, funny, offbeat, artistic, musical, kooky. I have a question for you. This is a very heavy question and I really want an answer from you. Do you believe in God? Yes. You do? Sandra, tell me everything. Tell me everything. I don't know, I just, it's just, I think it's just from growing up, going to shul and, you know, praying and, and reading all the, you know, the, the Torah portions and the prayers and being bat mitzvah and just, just <laughs> con the continuity and the history of our family coming from Russia and Romania, wherever Beautiful. our sides. And I don't know, I just feel like there's some, something bigger. I'm not saying it's not like a man with a beard, but it is right. something, it's some, it's some bigger energy and, and spiritual sort of, Wait a minute, darling, you went, you lived on a kibbutz, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah. Sandra Bernard at a kibbutz, go. <laughs> well, it was incredible. I, I, I was a really hard worker. I got up every day, whenever they wanted me to, whether it was to go work in the slaughterhouse, cleaning chickens, or work in the, in the, in the mashcheta, that's the, the slaughterhouse. I worked, and, with, and I, worked, day, yeah. I worked with chickens from birth until... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when they're really little the first couple of days you go in and you you have to put eye drops in their eyes there's two there's two diseases laryngo and there's one other disease and i can't think of it so you have to you have to inoculate them first when they're little tiny chicks you put eye drops and they close their eyes so that you they, every time the drop comes you have to and then when they're a little bit older you have to take a, a little thing and you have to scratch that you have to pick up their butts and they scratch their butts against another disease. So I worked with nice. them. They're so cute when they're chicks. By the time they're like teenage chickens, which is like a few weeks, they're already just obnoxious and horrible. Full of disrespect, uh -huh. full of problems of their own. They're yeah. young adults. They don't want to know you. They hate you. Exactly. <laughs> and and nothing, then, nothing less respectful than a teenage chicken, darling. Nothing. There's nothing just more disrespectful. <laughs> and then I would um, then need, and working in the slaughterhouse was a whole other thing. They they kill them kosher, and then they come down the assembly line. Not a lot of people know this, but you were a Kabbalist for a really long time, right? Like well, you I wouldn't call. Beauty. I mean. That's like silly. I wasn't like, like, you know, being a Kabbalist, you know, you're like some, you know, again, you got to be some man who's been studying the Torah for like their whole life or a woman. Hello. But again, it's very sexist. The religion. Is, so I have that. It's that duality. Yeah. The, the, you know, the, the very religious part of Judaism is totally misogynistic. And yes, that, it is. And that's like, ugh, you know, so I just take, I, I glean the most, you know, inspiring parts of Judaism, and, and which includes things from Kabbalah. And I put them into my own, you know, world. You know, obviously I'm like, 
I'd be there a was a psychic. There was a psychic that you sent me to, a Kabbalist psychic. Do you remember her? Uh, she was in Queens somewhere. Darling, darling, I'm not kidding you. I went for this reading. It was a fortune of money. It was like 500 bucks or something. What? Like 700 bucks. It was a lot of money. And I went there and she was like, oh my God, like, who, why did no one ever tell you that you were born to study Kabbalah? That's what oh. she told me. And she said to me, you know, you're, you're going to make your mother so happy and so proud. You're going to marry such a nice girl and have these wonderful children. And I was like, is she talking to, like, I, what? It was a moment. And the other memory I have about Ka Kabbalah was going to your apartment on yeah. that little square yeah. with Madonna and Bette Midler and sitting with Bette Midler and going, like, are these people kidding? And then oh, Bette I mean, Midler, yeah, you guys were, like, not having it. We were, like, not having it for a second. And she raised all. her hand and she said, hey, Rabbi, what's the meaning of life, right? Like, as a kind of a joke. And then he goes, oh, no, 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 I'll tell you the meaning of life. And we were, like, okay, well, bye bye I mean, it was a moment. It was a hilarious moment. But that, was, that was not cute. And, they, and, of course, they weren't even rabbis. That was the Kabbalah Center. Listen... But I, I took what I needed from it and... But yeah. you do have to, you do have to make your own kind of music. Sing your own, come on. Special song, make your own kind of music, even if nobody, nobody else is along. along. There you go. All right, one last inspiring message to our viewership, go. Yeah. Anything you want to say that's inspiring that now more than ever we must be willing to think of others and sacrifice to not always be grabbing for things on a superficial level and to realize through this very intense time of the pandemic that our rights are precious and can be easily taken away and even when we have our rights many people simultaneously do not have theirs and we must be generous and we must be conscious and continue to support people who we, we don't even know or don't understand because that is really the basis of being a good Jew you've got to give sadaka and not only financially but morally spiritually and every every possible way that you can sacrifice and give you must give Wow you know what? You are not kidding, sister. You are. I ask you a question like that. No preparation. You come up with that as an answer, boy. That is really beautiful and very impressive. You have well, a we're, wonderful, we're, we're, we're most so beautiful blessed. mind. We're so blessed. We're so lucky to have everything we have in our life and the freedom to be great artists and express ourselves. Why should anybody not have what we have? Good That's question. That's You're it. right, Charlie. That's it. You're right. You're and I'm right. very thankful and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful and we'll continue to do all the good things we need to do. You know what I'm thankful for? Besides our friendship, your unbelievable hair color and eyebrows today. Well, first of all, my gray is in. I haven't colored Yeah, but it looks, it in looks five good. In months, my eyebrows are. I, your you eyebrows know. are heaven. Don't touch your eyebrows. Okay. Really are you insane? Cute. I would never Don't touch my eyebrows. Never. Don't touch them. Never. Don't. I hate a pencil thin eyebrow. I'm going <laughs> to leave it on that note. There's nothing worse. Mine are all fake. I have to draw mine in. Oh, okay. Love you. I love you to bits. I love you to bits. <laughs> Little tiny Sandra Bernhard bits. 